formulators, this is Astery. Welcome back to Astery Apothecary and to the making of the emulsified clay mask formula. Um, before I get started, the link to purchase the formula, if you would like to, can be found down in the description box below, along with links to my other formulas. Um, also, if you would like to order any pre-made products for you in bulk so that you can use them in your business without having to make them yourself, I would love to help you with that. Just a note, I am about three or four weeks away from delivery at the time of this video. So if you are wanting to order any bulk products, go ahead and do that before the end of May um, 2022 <laughs> um, because I will be closing down physical products for a little while to spend time with baby. Um, but in this video, this beginning part, I am right now mixing up all of my ingredients for my oil phase. So this is an emulsified clay mask which means that it has multiple phases including oils and water and a cool down phase this also has a powder phase or a clay phase as well so right now i am actually going into the water phase i've already mixed up all of my oil based ingredients so this is any emulsifiers oils that i want to use um, anything that's oil soluble i've put that into the first beaker and i put that over a um not a double boiler, but I can't think of the proper term for it, but a pot of water, um, and I put the beaker into the pot of water over a low heat. Now I'm mixing up my water phase, which I love doing an emulsified clay mask, specifically because I can add water soluble actives. So this is allantoin, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, niacinamide, um, panthenol, um, anything that I want to use to maybe uh, target a specific skin issue, even though I cannot say that, I will not market it that way, but I'm able to use those in the formula instead of having to mix it myself. Another important ingredient that I'm able to add into this formula is a she later, she later, again, I don't know how to pronounce that. But it's an ingredient that helps boost your preservative. The thing about clay masks is that they are notoriously difficult to preserve properly. The uh, natural matter in the clay actually makes it hard to preserve. And something that helps with that is the she later, she later, one of them. Um, you'll see those in other products. Normally, you'll see EDTA. Um, in this formula, I use something called sodium phytate, although you can use the EDTA, you can use any one that you prefer. I like the sodium phytate, it's a little bit more quote unquote natural, um, but it helps to bind metals and other not so great stuff and keep it from basically affecting the preservative. Um, right now I am actually mixing up my powder phase, so this includes my clays, um, I make one where I use pumpkin powder, you could use chocolate, cocoa powder, sorry, um, charcoal, I make a turmeric mask, um, so you, you, there's a certain amount of powders that you need to equal up to that you'll get in the formula, it's up to you what you would like to use. I tend to use a small amount of other clays with kale and clay In this one I'm obviously using rose clay you see in the water phase I did use some rose water to kind of go along with the story um, but yes so being able to use water in the formula because the sodium phytate is water soluble is very important this helps to keep your mask preserved for longer I still do not recommend keeping it on the shelf or not using it up within six months I have a mask that has lasted over a year but I always err on the side of caution. Um, right now I am mixing up the uh, cool down phase. So the cool down ingredients will be anything that is heat sensitive such as extracts, preservative, anything like that that I don't wanna add into where I'm heating up everything just so that it does not make it no longer effective. So it looks like I'm mixing those two together now. I've got my oil phase and my water phase over my heat. 
both warming up. I want those to be about the same temperature when I go to mix them together. At this point, we are basically making like a lotion, an emulsion. We're gonna use the emulsifying waxes that we use in the oil phase to blend the water with the oil. That's the first part. Right now, I'm just showing it over the heat. Um, you'll see there in that oil phase beaker, the bigger, the larger beaker, everything has not melted yet. I'm going to stir it a little bit to get it all melted. Um, that just helps it move a little bit faster. Um, I was having a hard time because there was a little bit too much water in there and the beakers don't have that much in them. So they didn't want to stay flat. Um, but that's just not a big deal. Um, <laughs> use a little bit less water. I use bigger beakers mostly because that's what I had sanitized. And also I know I'm going to add my powders to that larger beaker. So I wanted to leave space for that. I do like to mix my water into my oils as the water is much easier to get all of it out of the beaker than the opposite way. But either way, doesn't matter. I know that's a misconception that you have to mix one into the other. And maybe with certain products that's true, but for the most part, it doesn't matter. You want one into the other, but you do want them to be around the same temperature so that one, your oils do not seize back up, especially your waxes or anything like that, um, if they're too cool. But also it helps create a stable emulsion. Um, so there's just a few minutes of that sitting on the heat. I am preparing my containers over there in the corner. Um, they've already been sanitized, but I always like to spray them down a little bit with alcohol solution just to make sure they're all sanitized. Keeping everything clean in this instance is very, 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 very important. You want to sanitize all of your materials um, prior to use. You want your space to be sanitized and clean. Gloves, uh, you know, hairnet, all of those things because you do not want to introduce anything into any water-based products but especially not this one because the preservative is already going to be working extra hard also this is not the time that I would recommend using what most people would consider more quote-unquote natural and I say quote-unquote because that is not a regulated term but natural preservatives you want to use a preservative that's tried and true and known to be a good, strong, broad spectrum preservative. You don't wanna be guessing with whether or not it's an effective preservative. Unfortunately, a lot of the more natural ones are not effective. So we're getting a nice clip of um, watching oils and butters and water heat up. I didn't realize this was so long. <laughs> um, but in a few minutes, I'm going to go into taking these off of the heat and blending them together. So that is coming up shortly. And like I said, um, you just wanna make sure that they're, both phases are within about 10 degrees of each other so that they'll blend together well and make for a more stable emulsion. And like I said, it will not cause your any waxes or anything like that to seize back up. If the water phase is too cool, it can cause those other ingredients to cool down too quickly. So we're going to go ahead and get into mixing everything together. You'll see I've got my jars and my lids set out and ready. I'm gonna move those to the side Get out my little silicone mat for my hot containers and get to blending. I am using a stick blender so that I can get a good, again, all of this to make a stable emulsion. So I'm just blending up the oil phase, making sure it's good. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and mix my water phase into my oil phase. You see right there, you see it turns that milky white. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. That is the oil and water beginning to blend. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick blend that. You guys forgive me if you hear a little huffing and puffing. I am currently 34 weeks pregnant and I can barely breathe. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I apologize ahead of time. Um, so I think I said in my last video, this is the last making tutorial that will be in this setup. I had made this in my old office before I moved out. Now I'll be working from home for a while until baby girl's a little bit bigger. So um, all of my newer videos will have a little bit of a different setup, which I'm still trying to get perfected. There's not as much light, but um, those ones I won't be doing a voiceover. I'll actually be talking through as I make the product. It's a lot easier that way. But this one, I made it with the intention of just doing music over it. But I know for me, I prefer explanation as I work. So you see that's all nice and blended. So now I am checking the temperature just to make sure it's not too too hot and looks like I can't remember if I added my cool down phase and then my powders or if I added my powders first looks like Honestly, I think it's easy. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and add my powders. So you want to add just a little bit at a time as it gets pretty chunky and thick quickly. Um, and so you want to be able to make sure you can actually blend everything in. So I just do a little bit at a time, blend it a little bit, make sure it's all mixed in, and then continue on. I'm showing there how everything is looking. And then it looks like I'm adding in the remaining powders again that is and this this is my rose clay so this is rose clay little kaolin clay um i think that's all i added in this one sometimes i like to add specialty ingredients like i said i'll add a little bit of turmeric a little bit of charcoal um i have different masks that i make this one is just supposed to be really soothing and great for most skin types I'm also, um, I have one that I'm making for the feet for a pedicure kit that will be coming out in June. The last set of products that I'm coming out with until after um, baby girl is born and I'm super excited about it because it's almost summer and it's time to get those feet right. The beauty of this again is that you can add all sorts of ingredients to, um, you know, make it what you want. Whenever you're making a formula, you always want to start out with what you want your end result to be and then work backward. So I knew I wanted this to be gentle. Um, it's a clay mask, so it's going to be slightly drying. That's just the nature of clays. But being able to, and I'm adding in the cool down phase, which was my extract and preservative. Um, but being able to kind of boost that with other hydrating ingredients like the glycerin, um, things like that that you can add helps with that. So everything is all blended in now. And now I'm just going to put them into my jars. I'm weighing my jar, tearing it out. Um, if you're selling product, you always want to make sure that you tear out your, <clears throat> which basically clears out the weight of the jar and measure accurately. In the U.S., it is about how much product is in the jar not including the jar so that is why I always weigh out my jars first um these are still not completely room temperature so I'm not going to put a cover on them yet what I'm going to do is um, let them sit overnight because usually I'm going home by this point <laughs> if it's the beginning of the day then by the time I leave they should be cool enough but I will let them sit overnight usually with like a paper towel you don't want to put the lid on the top of them. You don't want to um, introduce any condensation, which will build up from the heat from your product. That will drip down into your mask and that will cause molding because that condensation does not have preservative in it. Um, but yes, I will usually let these sit overnight or for a few hours to cool down. Then I will cover them, put a label on them and they are good to go. Um, Again, you can use this mask. It's not just for the face. You can use it on any area of your body. There's no rule that says it has to only be for your face. But this is formulated for the face. So it is formulated to be gentle. Um, but again, depending on what type of clay you use and ingredients, such as if you use bentonite clay, bentonite clay is way more intense that is not a clay that I would recommend for someone who has sensitive skin. So just do your research on your different clays 
and um, make your products accordingly. So that is basically it. If you have followed this, you have made your clay mask. So um, as I'm cleaning up and finishing up, I just want to thank you so much for watching again. You can find this formula in the description box below. And I will have another formula for you next week. Be on the lookout. If you have any suggestions of what you would like to see, please leave that in the comment box below. And just leave me a comment. Say hi. Also, um, it's the day after Mother's Day once this is going up. But happy belated Mother's Day to anyone who may be watching. Make sure if you are not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell so you'll get notified of any new videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.